Welcome to the Fat Jack Sports Hour. If you are a sports better, this is the most important hour of your day because the number one sports consultant in America has brought his national radio show and podcast here to YouTube. So while you're here, go ahead and like and subscribe or download the podcast and listen on your schedule. And now, here is our host, the number one sports consultant in America, ready to make you money this week and every week, the Fat Jack. Hello and welcome to the Fat Jack Sports Hour. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host. The weekend is here. It's Labor Day weekend. What a great time to be a football fan, to be a sports fan. We are going to make us so much money this year. Very excited about the year. And it all gets started this weekend um, as we have college football from start to finish. And then, of course, the NFL next week. So a lot of reasons to um, tune into the show to get signed up, to add some discipline to your gambling, and much more. Let me bring in my co-host from Louisville, Kentucky. We'll get this show underway, give away some free winners, get people on the, the road to success if they're going to be betting the games. Mr. Brandon Rush, how are you, buddy? I am well. The uh, The accounts uh, on all the apps are loaded and fired up and ready for a, uh, for a very profitable football season. I'm, I'm excited. I, this football season, I typically – um, ease into it, and I don't. I think we're going to have a few more plays than I had originally thought this first couple of weeks. So excited about the week! We typically have a really good, strong, really strong September. So I'm excited about that um, because there's nothing worse than losing early and then having to play catch up. And there's really not a whole lot better uh, to go with your September, you know, barbecue or whatever going on this weekend than winning early, getting into profit, and not even have to touch your own money. Right, we don't want to be laboring on Labor Day weekend. You want to go into it with a with a, a clean start, even a little bit ahead, because the NFL preseason did so well. But yeah, going into the the season with a uh, you know just firing on all cylinders is a great way to start. Yeah, let me. Uh, I'm going to give the numbers out, give the uh, website out for those that are wanting to sign up now. This is the lowest price you're going to get all year long to get all the plays. That less than a hundred dollars a week. Go to FatJackSports.com, FatJackSports.com, just like it sounds. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at, at FatJackSports. Um, get signed up right now. It will cost you more money to sign up next week than it does today and with the start of the NFL. And more importantly, you're going to miss this weekend's winner. So those of you that maybe waited last last week and didn't sign up uh, before the preseason or, or into the last couple of weeks, you missed out on profit. You missed out on money. So um, you don't want to miss that because the prices aren't going down. You'll see when you go to the website, if you checked it last week or the week before, the week before that, they were lower. They're not going down as we get closer to football season. And in fact, they will go up at least two more times. So better to sign up now than it is to wait for a bunch of different reasons. Just to put a recap on the preseason, Brandon, well, your your thoughts, we're going to have, of course, the NFL going next weekend by the time this show runs. But what were your thoughts on the preseason and uh, what'd you take away, if anything? If anything is the, is the key component of that, because there's so many NFL teams that really didn't play a lot of starters. And we did, there's teams that did not play their starting quarterback at all. Um, the Cleveland Browns come to mind. Obviously, they had the whole Deshaun Watson situation, but then they know they're going to be starting Jacoby Brissett for uh, at least a period of time before the suspension came down. And then even after the suspension comes down, they don't play him in the preseason. So it's hard to get a full gauge, I think, on where a lot of these NFL teams stand, considering we haven't seen them full throttle. I wonder if, if anybody's asked that, those exact questions. I'm sure they have in the... Uh... The press conferences sure. after the fact, sure. uh, because I, I'm Brandon. That was one of the things that I took away, and you and I did not talk about this off the air. But how many teams that either have question marks at quarterback or, frankly, bad quarterback play? Mm -hmm. It's not like we all have Aaron Rodgers or all have Patrick Mahomes. Right. I get it, or Tom Brady even. I don't care if I see Tom Brady or those other guys. Although we did mm -hmm. actually see Tom Brady last for week. a few minutes no. in the last game, I'm okay with them not if they have those guys. But anybody else. What kind of arrogance level do you have to have as far as your evaluation goes to feel like you don't at least want to see him for a couple of minutes in the preseason against other teams? Now, coaches would probably say, well, you know, we have, you know, matchup, different um, periods where we have other teams come in, and sure, those are a lot more. Those joint well, practices, you know, they get they, they really like the evaluations in that, and they, obviously they pour over the tape from practice. But I'm with you. I don't see how some of these teams are going to go into a season with the – with without playing some of those guys in actual preseason games. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see the motivation. It, right. I, I don't see how it helps. No. And frankly, if the quarterback gets hurt, who cares? 
Right. You don't have a good one anyway. So yeah. why not give some give some experience? You know, the Jets come to mind. Mm-hmm. The Jets are playing their their backups because Wilson gets hurt. Yep. And it looks like they've got you know their starter. They're going to go with um you know what's his face the old played for Flacco. Baltimore. Bla- Flacco, exactly. They're going to go with Flacco. But the backup who's brought them back, uh, and they've won every game in the preseason, they've learned a lot about him. And I understand backups are important, but when you don't have a good starter, what are you doing for your team, for chemistry, and all the different things that go into an NFL game if you're not playing them some? I, it makes no sense at all. It, it gives that false sense of security, which I think a lot of teams, that's really their only motivation, other than assessing some talent at some positions. But to get that confidence level up, I would say they're doing it at the expense of maybe being better if they would actually play their their starters a little bit during the reg- during the preseason. I think the Steelers are a team that come to mind that actually did it the right way. Um, they were play they played Pickett a lot. They played Mason Rudolph. They played uh, Mitch Trubisky to, to see a who's going to be the guy, but then also b see how they do in those game like situations. So let me ask you though, without these teams playing certain players in the preseason. How difficult is it for, from a handicapping standpoint, to exactly know what we're getting into in week one? Yeah, it's it's not as difficult as you would think because the NFL, the talent level across the board, unless you have Mahomes or Rodgers or Brady, when you step down, it's a lot like we, how we handle teams when their quarterbacks get hurt the week of the game. So key, key pieces like that. Everybody else, they show up, even if it's alignment, a backup lineman or a backup defensive end, those guys, there's not that talent level drop off that you might think. If you don't have a start quarterback, you're going to get re- decent play at best out of the quarterback situation. So it's not something we're going to take into consideration a whole lot if they're not playing them um, early. We're going to go ahead and make our bets accordingly and let the public drive the money one way, credence of value the other way. Not only betting contrarian, but starting there. Uh, there's there's things you can do early in the year to get yourself to a better spot of making money that have very little to do with how Jalen Hurts matches up against whoever defense he's playing and so on and so forth. Because Vegas has that similar information. We, we get a little bit deeper on some of those matchups uh, than what the general public does, so we're able to find some value there. And then it's it's about perception versus reality. So a lot of different things get us there, but not playing the starting quarterback some of these teams makes no sense to me. To your point about uh, Pittsburgh, you know their coach is the best in the league versus the number. Uh, over his career mm-hmm. as an underdog. As an underdog, he's incredibly successful. They do a ton right in Pittsburgh. They're figuring it out at quarterback. Trubisky looks like he's going to be the guy, but uh, I, th- I think they're going to play pickup before the end of the year for sure. I don't. I just. I, I, I'm not a Mitchell Trubisky fan in any form or fashion, no, no matter no. who he plays for. I just don't believe he could throw. You take him the fair and say, here, throw this ball up against the throw it into the tire. I don't think he can hit the tire. He just can't throw it where he's aimed. He's probably in the worst position of any starting quarterback in the NFL because. The backup, the backup quarterback in college is always the most popular guy, right? In the NFL, they're playing in the stadium that Kenny Pickett played college football in. So if if Trubisky, given his history, does anything substandard, the the natives are going to be calling for for Pickett in a heartbeat. Yeah, that's so happening he's, either way. He's yeah. he's in another bad spot, and he he underperforms almost every single year. So, uh, interesting things going on up there. A lot going on in college football with the Labor Day weekend card. We're going to give away a free winner or two. Go to FatJackSports.com. Get signed up today. Be sure to download the podcast of the show at all your your uh, podcast outlets because that will get you additional free winners as we go through the year, uh, other than what we give away on the air. But we're going to give away a couple on the air. Uh, This week zero brand, or week one, excuse me, um, what what are the games that jump out? What are you looking forward to the most? Honestly, I'm really intrigued to kind of see what some of the the biggest names in college football do coming out of the the offseason. What is USC going to look like? What is... Uh, you know, uh, the teams that won a championship a year ago, like what is Georgia going to look like? Granted, uh, they're playing Oregon in, in a neutral site game. Um, w- what can Cincinnati do for a, a repeat uh, against Arkansas going on the road to Fayetteville? Those are some very intriguing matchups to start the year. Yeah, Arkansas has the toughest schedule in the country this year. Hmm. Um, of the top 10 that are that are supposed to be the most difficult schedule of the country. Arkansas starts with Cincinnati. They're down to, I think, a four-point favorite at home against Cincy that, of course, won a ton of games last year. Right. Uh, but they have the toughest schedule, so there, there's no rest for the weary as far as Arkansas. Razorbacks go. Every time they're favored, they really need to take advantage of it. Arkansas has the toughest schedule than Auburn, Mississippi State, a lot of SEC teams here. A&M, Florida, uh, you don't get out of the SEC until you go to Indiana, 
that has the seventh Louisville. Uh, the Cardinal there have uh, the eighth or ninth toughest schedule, uh, you know, proceed before the year goes. Vanderbilt after that, Colorado, then LSU. Easiest schedule of Power 5 conference is UCLA. So uh, look for the Bruins maybe to be a little bit inflated record-wise once we get to bowl season. Uh, if things play out, and these are just projections, obviously. Sure. Um, a couple other interesting spots, you know, Utah goes to Florida this weekend. That is a very intriguing game because Utah, a very sexy pick in the Pac-12. Of course, they won it a year ago and have been pretty dominant under Kyle Whittingham in, in his time there. And really, the, the rest of the Pac-12, not that good. Yeah, and they're one of six teams that are supposed to be favored in every game. These are kind of preseason uh, projections, but Utah, one of six teams, should be favored in every game if they were played right now. Not, you know, Obviously not based on injury or performance. Yeah, exactly. But Alabama and Ohio State projected to be double-digit favorites in every game. Air Force, Georgia, Oklahoma, and Utah. Those hmm. are the six teams right now that if they were played, everybody on their schedule right now, they should be the favorites. So those might help you a little bit if you're if you're not wanting to dig into every schedule and look for a team to win a conference. Obviously, being favored, you know, you're supposed to win the game right. if you're if you're given points. So those are just some you know uh, just a, a preseason projection of how things are supposed to go uh, with some of the top teams in the country. But yeah, I, I think that's going to be an interesting one because they are they go to Florida as I said, Florida having the fifth toughest schedule of anybody. Um, to start, and they're a small favorite there. So interesting Labor Day weekend card. I think there's great games up and down the board. We're going to get to see teams like Ohio State uh, playing uh, Notre Dame. Uh, they're a 17.5-point favorite. A lot of early sharp money coming in on the Buckeyes. They opened a 15-point favorite, um, and uh, money is funneled in on them, not only from some of the general public, but more importantly, some pretty sharp players. That's one thing we don't talk about enough, Brandon. When guys get signed up at FatJackSports.com, you not only are getting, you know, I started this 28 years ago, and I was a successful sports better 28 years ago. So we were making money doing it then. But the amount of information, the amount of contacts, all the different things going on that have happened in the last 28 years, they're really uh, so, so many. I mean, they're immeasurable. They really are. And one of the things is I know there are, there are other people in this world who make money betting on sports. I'm not arrogant to think I'm the only guy. Now I also know guys that say they do and they don't. Right. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the big distinguishing factor is everybody out there is going to say they win, but who actually does? Um, and so I know the guys that do and the guys that do pretty, and I get their, their plays. And so I know where they are. I know why lines are moving. Is it the general public just, grabbing at straws mm -hmm. is it somebody who maybe has a big following but moving doesn't a bunch of numbers yeah moving the numbers because he has a bunch of people either online or has service it's very profitable for him but not necessarily his clients so what is it why are these lines moving this particular game is being moved by a guy who does okay over the last five years or so um, and another there's actually a couple of them that have helped move this line with ohio state but one of the guys Used to be really popular, really good back, I don't know, seven, eight, ten years ago. Breaking about even over the last three or four years. Hmm. But when he puts out a game, people follow because he's very in detail in his explanation of what's going to happen. And people like that. They like the fact they get a lot of information, even if he's going to break even and lose people money on the year, which, you know, I'm not blaming him. I'm just saying that's why this particular game has moved from 15 and a half up over that key number 17. So those are things you get when you sign up at fatjacksports.com. You're getting all this inside, this information from these other either handicappers, gamblers, or whatever that will give you a better chance to make money, which is why we're all here. If we're betting, we want to make money. Um, go to fatjacksports.com, get signed up. Less than 100 bucks a week for those longer packages. Um, let's give away a free winner, Brian. You want to? Absolutely. The, uh, the free winners are, are always a vital piece of this show. And if you download the podcast every week, uh, you're going to get more free winners. So this is definitely a free winner type show. Yeah, it, it is. A free, it is. Uh, and I always preface the show and the year with this. If you're playing free winners and trying to make money, if that's yeah. the way you're going about it, and that's your plan, do you go? Do you go get a date? You swipe right on Tinder, get a date, and take her to Costco's and eat the free samples. Is that what you're doing for dinner? You're going to get the uh, the veggie straws and the kombucha juice, maybe some caramel popcorn. Or Is that what you're doing? Because if that that makes about as much sense to me, is taking a date to Costco and eating free samples samples as it does for you to get free winners from anybody 
and expect that to sustain you, to put you over the top and turn you into a winning gamble. It's just not a thing. It doesn't work that way. And the reason it doesn't is because, A, you're getting free winners from who knows how many different sources. Mm -hmm. You're not getting the top selections because we, we know this in the business or in any business that just like I go into Costco and I eat the, the veggie straws, maybe two or three times, I have no intention of buying the veggie straws. Never. Why would you when, if, you're, if you're getting them for free? I'll, I'll, well, even if I love them, I'm going to probably like something else more. <laughs> I'm going to go get the Doritos. I went the other day to Costco and they had a cheese. They were giving away this cheese. It was delightful. Really, really good cheese. Did I buy the cheese? No, I didn't buy the cheese because, A, I got free samples and they were delicious. But more importantly, I if I got the cheese, I was going to have to unpack it, cut it up, buy some chips, some Trisket things to go with it. Maybe get some I was going to be a whole process to get the free to get the free cheese into something that I would eat at home. So I just passed it by and I went on to the next thing. Now, I bought a bunch of stuff at cost, but I didn't buy. The point is. If you're playing free winners, I know this because I will hit a free winner. I give away free winners every week. We're going to give away on the show. You can go to the website, sign up for an additional free winner. I've already sent it out. I'll send it out again here before the weekend. But you're going to, if you get that and you win, the chances are you're not going to sign up. What you're going to do is say, oh, the free winner is great. I'd have to pay a dime for it. I'll just wait for the next free winner and I'll win on that too. That's what you do. If I lose on the free winner, It'd be like me going to Costco and getting food poisoning from the free winner or from the free food and then being upset that they gave me a free sample and it made me sick. You lose and you I, I immediately will get an email or something like I care. I don't, don't send me an email if I lose on a free winner because what you know about the free plays, not only with me, but with everybody, they are not going to be our best plays. Because think of it from somebody who actually wants to win money, who's investing in a winning year. They don't want to turn on this show or download this podcast, and thousands and thousands of them do, and hear the same place, <clears throat> excuse me, that we're selling as our best selections that I'm personally playing, being given out as free winners on the show. It doesn't make any sense. So you're going to get second tiered. Now, they're going to win over the course of the year, but are you going to be sustained? Are you going to become a profitable sports gambler over the season? 99% chance no. Invest less than 100 bucks a week and you win. That is my long version of the disclaimer for the free winners. Indiana hosts Illinois. Indiana, three and a half point favorite, total of 47. Brandon, any idea about this game? Well, Illinois uh, put on a quite a show last week against Wyoming. Indiana, one of the nation's longest losing streaks. So right out of the gate of the Big Ten, I, I feel as if Illinois probably, with a game under their belt, might have a bit of an advantage here. And why is and, and combine that with the fact that Indiana was one and ten last year against the spread. Oof. This is a team that not only didn't win games, it didn't cover games they didn't at show all. Up. How'd you like to be an Indiana gambler? You live in you know Indianapolis, and you're like, I you know what I play. I went to the Hoosiers. I love them. I'm going to play them every single week, no matter what. You're broke. I mean, you didn't make Thanksgiving <laughs> one and ten against the spread. Yet, with all the things you just said, Illinois an underdog to Indiana this week. Doesn't make much sense. I mean, right? something, something's fishy there. Something is a muck, Brandon. You're exactly right. Illinois 4-1 and one against the spread their last five on the road. They typically outperform the market there. Um, four of the last six Indiana games have gone over. It tells me they're not playing a lot of defense either. But with all that being said, Vegas typically does not give money away. No. And Those I casinos do. casinos didn't build themselves. No. And even in this spot, they know – that Illinois, uh, I, we have to you have to decide in this type of spot. Is it more about what Illinois did or what Wyoming is? And, and those are always the tough ones in the first couple weeks. Exactly, because I mean, you look back, Wyoming had I think twenty six transfers come in, and they they had they basically were on Twitter begging for a quarterback to come during the off season. So it could just be a a massive overreach on on the public perception to say, wow, well look at what Illinois did last week. But yeah, was that because Illinois is good or or was Wyoming that awful? Yeah, and you're getting some money coming in on Illinois. People are looking now they're diving a little bit deeper into this. And this game goes on um Friday. And so you, you're, if you're listening to the show Saturday, this will already have taken place. You download the podcast. You're welcome. This is an extra free one for you. Um, some of that early money coming in on Illinois because of exactly the things we just said, a game under their belt. They look good. Um, Indiana was horrible last year. All those things. All that being said, though, 
Vegas does not put up lines like this for them to give money away. They like Indiana at home. I will take Indiana at home as a free winner. Like I say, not a selection going out to my clients, but as a free winner, lay the two and a half now. Uh, down from three and a half to two and a half. Play Indiana minus the points. That's your first free winner of the day. 800 298 1383. Best way to get a hold of me, go to fatjacksports.com. Get signed up there. The season will cost you less than $100 a week. Prices are never going to be lower. You can get the weekend. You want to get this weekend's plays in football uh, and baseball. And that's NFL preseason, college football, and the free bases. Get that all the way through Labor Day Monday. It's about $100 for the weekend. Um, or, and normally it's $200 a week. So going forward, when you want Monday night, Thursday night, Wednesday night, Friday, all those things, you play about pay about 200 bucks a week. Or the longer packages, it breaks down to less than $100 a week for the exact same plays. Plays are text to your cell phone, they're emailed to you. They're going to make you money. You're going to be successful at sports gambling. And even if you play your own stuff, you're going to be better adding my stuff to your stuff than you will be just playing your own picks. So go to fatjacksports.com, get signed up now. Don't wait until you're down because then it's more money. To, you have to invest more money. You then have to dig yourself out of a hole before you're into profit and so many more reasons. So don't do that. Get signed up today and uh, get the place. Text your cell phone and email to you. Add the UFC this weekend. It's only 100 bucks for the UFC. UFC winning about four out of every five weeks on average over the last two years. There's a big card going this weekend. Get those plays for only 100 bucks as well. Hey, this is the Fat Jack, and as the seasons are changing, now is the time to make money betting on sports. Are you going away for the weekend or betting all year long? Stop turning on the TV and playing your favorite teams. Go to FatJackSports.com and get solid winning selections. Text to your cell phone or email to you. There's no recorded line. There's no underdog lock in the millennium. Just 27-year history of turning a profit for my clients and myself. Go to FatJackSports.com today. FatJackSports.com to win and have a great weekend betting the game. If you are looking for more action this week, Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. With multi sport prop entries, you can mix and match your action every day from almost anywhere in the country. Sign up with promo code FATJACK and get a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. That's $100 when you sign up with promo code FATJACK. Go to prizepicks.com or download the app and sign up with promo code FATJACK to get in on the action today. Welcome back to the Fat Jack Sports Hour. And now here is our host, a man setting the table for your college football weekend, the cookouts, the barbecues, whatever you're doing on this holiday. He is the Fat Jack. Thank you so much, Brandon. Fat Jack Sports Hour. Segment number two, getting ready to make some money this weekend. It's Labor Day weekend. Football kickoff for so many different universities around the country. We're getting into game week next week as the NFL starts up for everybody else. So what a great time. Everybody's Kenny Rogers right now. Mm -hmm. Everybody who's betting on the games, everybody who loves their team, they all are super excited. Their teams are going to win their conference. They're going to go to the national championship. um, And they are just blind lovers of their universities. And uh, there's something uh, adorable about that, Brandon. (laughs) It is, but at the same time, it's kind of disappointing because, I mean, sports is the only thing that people will continually go back to just to be let down every stinking year. Yeah, there, there's only going to be one champion mm-hmm. in uh, as a national champion. There's only going to be five power, co- five power five power five conference champions. Everybody else is going to be a wait till next year. But how many of you have realistic expectations? You know, where are you? Uh, you know, I spend a lot of time in Oklahoma mm-hmm. and a lot of time in Texas and a lot of time in places where um, things have been good. You know, people forget Oklahoma's won the. Big 12 championship gone to the playoff a number of times, but their expectations are so, so high. And I'm interested to see, at least from Oklahoma standpoint, um, if at any point they do re- acknowledge, I think it's the best word, the transfer portal and how many players left and how many players are new and how long it might take to mesh these, uh, these athletes together in a world where you're limited on your practice times, you're limited on your practice sessions and all these things that go on. The good thing for University of Oklahoma is I felt like last week that UTEP would put up a much better fight against North Texas that I think is a little bit overrated. UTEP rolled over, didn't play that well early. So Oklahoma's getting a team. And by the way, they couldn't stop the run at all. Uh, And so they're getting a worse team than I think they might have had I been right on where I thought UTEP was going to be. So that's good. Let them get their feet underneath them. Um, But other teams, you know, I always want to tell fans this. 
always remember it could be worse than you think. Then no matter what happens, it could be worse. You could be a Nebraska Cornhuster fan. No. Oh. And then it would be worse than almost everybody out there. Whatever your university, unless you're, of course, Kansas. We have a lot of people listening in Kansas. If you're a Kansas Jayhawk fan, I will tell you, you may win fewer games than Nebraska and have a much better year than Nebraska. Um, you have a chance to do uh, have uh, your optimism. I'm encouraged by. I'm I'm excited for you because you do have a team there that's going the right way. A team that was in a bunch of close games and should do be- a better job of closing the deal. Nebraska. I, I I think they may be. First of all, Scott Frost is gone. That always when you when you lose your job, you you're set back at least a year or so from where you were. Their transfer portal will open up. Everybody's going to leave. There'll be new players come in. Blah blah blah. So no matter where your team is, it could be worse. You could be a fan of Nebraska. So speaking of Nebraska, and then we talked about Kansas. If Kansas wins this weekend, they will have the same record as Nebraska over the last thirteen games. Yeah, I saw a a, a uh, stat on the old coach Bo Pelini mm-hmm. and what his record was when they showed him the door. Yeah, and and the the stat was basically that Scott Frost could win the next I want to say 50, 30, 50, 50 games, 50 games, and would still be a game behind Bo Pelini if, if he ran off fifty straight. Right. I mean, guys, think about that. The, the standards have fallen so much there. And I'll tell you this, what else I learned from this? Scott Frost is an incredible interview. This dude should be an attorney. He should probably go to some some law school and become an attorney as a fallback because this guy could keep his job and then go out, by the way, and kick an onside up 11 in right. Ireland with a team that has doubted themselves for an entire year whether they can get the job done or not. Yeah. I mean, honest, I don't sure he makes the year. I mean – he gave a million dollars back on his contract, so I, I just to keep the job. But um, I don't know. He he definitely is off to a rough start. So no matter where you are around the country, it could be worse. Absolutely. It, 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 you always think that, like you said, you always go into the season with some optimism. Nebraska's already out, and it's, and it's first week in September. Yeah, exactly. FatJackSports.com, you don't want to have to wade through these different teams and who's going to play better than they're supposed to, who's going to play worse. We've sent out over 15 when season win totals, we'll send those out to you the minute you sign up uh, for at least the month or longer. You're going to get those win totals in the NFL and in college football. Play those. Those hit about 70% year in and year out. It's some of the easier money out there uh, because I've been really, really good at, at figuring out what information is important uh, to predict long-term success or failure versus the number. More times than not failure. I'm amazed. I talked to another gambler who – uh, a guy I'm doing this TV show that comes out this weekend. Also, if you're around the country, uh, follow our social media platforms to get times and uh, markets where this TV show is going to run. But I was talking to the other guys on the TV show who's a professional gambler like myself for 25 years or so, and how we both have the easier money is almost always in teams to fail versus the number versus overachieving. It makes sense if you think about it because injuries will only affect you one way. Um, it's and public perception will will create value on an under with teams that people think are going to be better, and so the under when you sign up you're going to get a bunch of win totals and some of them are under so uh, you do have to earn those all year but the ones that we play to go over I don't think you'll have to wait that long um, and honestly I've got under on a couple of teams that are predicted to win nine or ten games in college football so it's not going to take long for us to figure out if they lose two or three of their first four or five, that money will cash as well. So just an added reason to go to fatjacksports.com, add some discipline to your gambling, get signed up and start winning today. We've talked about this before, Brandon. I, I, I'm amazed at how many different quote unquote handicappers are now in the world, professional gamblers who think they're going to make money. And by the way, most of them are like 25 years old. It is a it is a young man's game, especially on the internet. It is not exactly on the internet. It is not a young man's game. It is an old man's game. This is one of those jobs that if you do not have experience on your side, I don't care how well you've done in a year or so betting games. Mm-hmm. I would not listen to you for five minutes. I would write it down, and then the minute you were bad, I would show you the door. But I would not pay. And this is a public service now. So do not. Do not do not call any recorded message where anybody offers you the inside lock of the whatever. So and so's breaking the books again. He's got the inside play of the whatever. Call for this information on a free recorded line. Do not ever do that. Ever, ever, ever. You're going to be bothered by salesmen, not guys that make money betting. 
Only salesmen are going to bother you for weeks and weeks to come, and they're going to drive you crazy during football season, no less. You don't want to be driven crazy during football season. So don't call those ever. And number two, do not ever listen to a gambler or a handicapper that's not at least 35 or 40 years old and has documented results for at least five to 10 years. Those are very standard things you would do in every other part of your life. But when you get in this, it's like you want to believe what somebody tells you just because they're telling it to you. Don't do that. Apply some common sense. Where is his, where is his record posted? Where are his results? Is everybody getting the same place? Why are they asking me how much I bet before they'll tell me how much I need to pay? All of those are red flags. Giant ones. Giant red flags that are waving in the winds. And there are things that guys like Brandon and I who have been doing this for years and years and decades, we will live through that too. All right. We we had those guys. I finally picked up the phone and thought, you know what? Let's see what that's like. And right. called and then and then had to listen to some guy in a cubicle try to sell me the moon. Not only on that call, but for weeks, weeks, weeks later. And then they I, turn around and sell your information to other handicappers who have since come up. And then you're going to get harassed by them when you didn't even give that person your number. There's a whole ro- a whole world of this. I had a, I, I put on Twitter, I had another guy call me yesterday. I've gotten more aggressive and angry at these people. <laughs> Is that, how's that working for you? I, I, the same way it does in every other part of my life, Brandon. Nobody <laughs> wants me to scream at him. <laughs> Nobody yeah. likes that. Yeah. I can see why. But I, this guy called, and he was someplace, and he said, ah, you know, I've, I'm looking to purchase some net, some list of some clients to get into the, you know, blah, blah, blah for the upcoming year. And I said, go get a real effing job. What are you doing? Don't call anybody and bother them and pray on their weaknesses because they had a losing week. Go, go sell something. So I'm yelling at him. What are you talking about? I'm just I'm trying to get in, the, get in the game. I'd like to be able to get some leads. I need it. I said, no, you're horrible at this. If you're any good, you wouldn't be calling me. And so now I'm screaming at somebody. I don't even know who it is. It's Sunday night, the Sabbath. There's no way to spend the Sabbath, Brandon. There are much better ways to be spending Sunday nights. I mean, House yeah. of Dragon is on now. We got NFL. We got Sunday night football starting here pretty soon. We got a college game this week. I mean, there are tons of better ways. I would rather stub my toe on a Sunday evening than I was. I was um, catching up on Love Island. Oh, God. Wiley called. Mackenzie escorted herself out. She quit. I'm like four episodes behind. Mackenzie t- said she's going home. It was trauma. It's trauma time, in my it's world. It's a bad time to be behind on Love Island. I can get it's a that's right. And it's a bad time to call me looking for leads from my clients that I would never ever there's not enough money in the world for me to sell somebody's information to another certain there's not enough money. I you know what? Try me. If you're out there, call me. Offer me a million dollars for my clients' information. I will start screaming at you like there's no tomorrow. And if you'll pay first, then I might take your money and then not give you one name. <laughs> And then we're going to end up in the people's court in front of Wapner or something, or Judge, Judge Judy. Judy or yeah, yeah. F- fighting about it, and probably actually fight. Now, I, there's not enough. I'm not selling my client's information to anybody. That is the the ultimate betrayal, and I'm, I would never do it. So, FatJackSports.com. If you don't want your information sold by a 25 year old who probably bought your information from somebody else or got it because you wanted a free winner, then go get signed up at FatJackSports.com, and uh, you don't have to do all that. You can actually start winning. All right, let's give away another free winner. Um, you got another game you want to look at? Or you want me to just pull one out? I mean, Georgia Oregon is is one of the marquee games of the weekend. Also, as you mentioned, Ohio State Notre Dame is going to be getting uh, a lot of attention from people on uh, on every side of the uh, of the sports book aisle. So I'm I'm curious to to see what those games uh, those games look like, especially with Notre Dame going into Columbus. Yeah, I, that that's the one that that thing could be. You know, Ohio State doesn't do a great job of blowing out teams uh, with double digit. A, a team that you might look at if you're wanting to lay a big number. Um, Alabama's they are on a four zero streak covering thirty or point odds, and I think it's because they have they have such deep talent. It's not necessarily that he, he you know the guy's not Lane Kiffin. He doesn't care about the line. I mean, literally Lane Kiffin against uh, I think Bowling Green last year ball somebody. I mean, basically was up six and scored with under a minute to play because they were given six and a half. I mean, threw the ball down the sidelines, like a 40 yard pass. So uh, there's just no other reason the world he would have done that other than he knew what the line was. Right. So Alabama's not that, but they can't call off the dogs against bad teams. So you might keep that in mind. They're four and oh, their last four as overall, overall Nick Saban's not been that successful against the number. Um, But, and I'll, I'll I'll give you a few coaches that have been, uh, which I thought was an interesting uh, look inside, you know, 
teams that generally speaking are going to cover more times than not. Um, but Georgia, Oregon is, is the other one. Georgia 17 and a half point favorite returning uh, almost nobody on defense. I mean, they basically replaced everybody on defense. I think had uh, nine guys from that defense drafted. Yeah. All of the NFL. And so people think there will be a regression. This Georgia staff recruits Kirby smart really is a good recruiter. So I don't know that I would, you know, throw them out as far as having a shot in the sec. And I know, you know, projection wise, they're supposed to be favored in every game. So, um, through the regular season. So I think they still have a good chance. Georgia 11 and one straight up their last 19 Oregon six and 13 against the spread their last 19. So Oregon not covering many games. And when you get up over double digits, a lot of times people will find reasons to play the underdog in spots like this, especially when you have a team like Georgia returning so many starters. So I would lean toward Georgia here. I think there's a little bit of public uh, value in what they'll take with Oregon. Again, not a release play. Um, also, Georgia has been going under, so they're going to need to do it with their defense. Eight of their last 11 have gone under uh, a Georgia game. So uh, Georgia minus the points. That's your second free winner of the day. Kill coaches, Brandon, that cover. I thought it was very interesting. Um, since 2005, active coaches. So oh, going back, you know, what's that, 17, 18 years, which there's from a team perspective, it's not always a good idea to look deep but from coaches you can get some trends off this that are useful sure Co- coaches that typically outperform the market they're not always going to be great teams but they're going to their teams are going to play hard they're going to be pretty sound for the most part not going to turn the ball over a lot and this list of the top coaches against the spreads and so five is exactly that um david shaw from stanford uh is up to the top he's 61 and 45 against the spread since 05 uh Mike Gundy, mm. 102 and 74 against the spread. Uh, again, fitting the same mold, right? They haven't won a ton of titles, but sound football. They play hard. They don't give up. Um, that time they play their starters longer in most of these cases. Then they'll go to backups. Uh, Campbell at Iowa State is next. He's 15 games over since 2005. Uh, Wake Force coach Clawson, he's um, 18 games up since 05 and then Penn State Franklin uh is 19 games over 500 since 05 so uh and they I mean they all coach since 05 it's just since 05 who's right. who's generating the most profit for you if you're playing that coach um the worst Mark Stoops down at the bottom seven games under 500 and no surprise to me Kirk Ferentz at Iowa um, Iowa good every year you talk about playing to the level of the level of their competition that is a team that historically, if they are a 20-point favorite, they're going to win by three. If they're a three-point favorite, they're going to win by three. Yeah, I, I don't know. how It'd be hard to be. Iowa fans are some of the most passionate people on the planet, and I don't know how that is because I could, <laughs> I'd could i have trouble being a fan of Iowa for five minutes. Alcohol them. helps, apparently. Certainly does. Well, you get that at Wisconsin, too. Illinois a little bit. Minnesota, I mean, yeah. Minnesota, places like that. I, I looked at the number one uh, drunk states. I had a deal on that on, mm-hmm. on one of the mm-hmm. – and it was like they they had red, dark red. If it really and those type of states up there, Wisconsin, Iowa, they were like purple. They were like so, drunk. It was drunk like a really deep every, bruise. Yeah, deep bruise. The dark purple, drunk all day every day. They're not functioning without alcohol and cheese, apparently. So, um, FatJackSports.com. Go get signed up today. Start winning this weekend. If you are looking for more action this week, Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. With multi sport prop entries, you can mix and match your action every day from almost anywhere in the country. Sign up with promo code FATJACK and get a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. That's $100 when you sign up with promo code FATJACK. Go to prizepicks.com or download the app and sign up with promo code FATJACK to get in on the action today. Hey, this is the Fat Jack, and as the seasons are changing, now is the time to make money betting on sports. Are you going away for the weekend or betting all year long? Stop turning on the TV and playing your favorite teams. Go to FatJackSports.com and get solid winning selections, text to your cell phone, or email to you. There's no recorded line. There's no underdog lock in the millennium. Just 27-year history of turning a profit for my clients and myself. Go to FatJackSports.com today, FatJackSports.com to win and have a great weekend betting the game. Welcome back to the Fat Jack Sports Hour, and for the final time today, here is our host, poised to set up your holiday weekend. He is the Fat Jack. 
Thank you so much, Brandon. Fat Jack Sports Hour, segment number three, Labor Day edition. Everybody's at the lake. On your way to the lake, hopefully you're taking uh, this show with you, especially if you're in one of those states where you're betting on sports. We'll be able to get you into profit starting this weekend. Go to fatjacksports.com, get signed up, and start winning. Brandon, I wrote down, I write down little things during the week. Some of them have nothing to do with sports. Other ones do. Why are eggs not considered meat? Why are eggs not considered meat? Uh, I would think because you don't have to separate them from a bone in order to eat them. Okay. I mean, that's, I mean, because you think of I mean, a fish is still meat and you I have don't to hate the up. idea. I don't hate it. I don't hate that, that idea. I don't know. That, I don't know that, that's right. But I mean, I'm trying to think through clearly of all the meats right. that don't have a bone. I can't think of any, so you <laughs> might be right, but I think it's kind of hip- hypocritical to not allow an egg be in the meat family. I mean, it's going to be meat, right? I mean, if we're going to believe in pro life, how are we not ha- turning eggs into meat? I think it's a hypocritical to be pro life and not believe that eggs are meat. I, I that's a take. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that. rarely do we get into those kind of topics on, I'm on not, this show, but I'm not saying I'm for or against it. No. I'm saying if you're pro life, you better be going around telling people that that uh, eggs are meat. I, so, but the the hole in my theory though would be like snakes. Snakes have they have a Definitely vertebrae? Meat. That's really? meat. I think they do. There's something in there. Huh. We'll think about it. What about a um a stingray? Those have uh, a bone. They, 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 I think they have cartilage, which would be considered bone. Okay. So, well, yeah. sorry, I wasted two minutes on it, but <laughs> I I just wrote it down. Thought I'd bring it up. So, FatJackSports.com. Go get signed up today. Start winning. Don't email me about pro-life or pro-choice or any of it. I'm not taking a take. I'm just saying the consistency would put eggs in the meat category if you're pro-life. So, um, Big weekend coming up. We've given away a, free, a couple of free winners. Brent, Brent, who do you like to – do you have a long shot to win a conference or who do you like to win the national title? I, it's such a it's such a, a talk show question, right? I mean, who's going to win the national right. title? You're either going to step out on a limb to create some controversy – where everybody can say that's a stupid pick, or you're going to pick the favorite, which is boring, and you probably shouldn't waste your time doing it. Because honestly, if you're picking against Alabama, Georgia, really that's it. Alabama and Georgia because of last year, you're really reaching because year in and year out, that's who wins. It's an SEC team. So right. What, so what are your thoughts on national champion? And then more importantly, do you have a conference winner that might be a, a – I, I, I do have a conference winner, and you're right. This year, Georgia – Alabama, Ohio State, really, if you're picking anyone outside those top three, you're you're really grasping at straws. The division or the conference winners that I think are really going to kind of sneak up and grab somebody, um, I think Miami out of the ACC is a is a very nice little uh, opportunity, not only to uh, to upset the apple cart a little bit, but to really kind of make a, a, a pretty high uh, amount of profit. They're uh, five to one. Um, Clemson, obviously, the favorite course, what they've done over the last decade or so. Is uh, is a is a huge spot. Uh, you touched on it last week. Uh, Baylor five and a half to one um, to win the, the the Big Twelve. I think is is also a very solid pick. And then out of the American, uh, Cincinnati, even a, a slight underdog. They're not they're not the favorite to uh, to repeat the uh, the American Athletic Conference. So a little bit there, but Miami yeah. the biggest one of those. Yeah, Clemson loses both coordinators. Um, they're going to be in the conversation. Miami is a very sexy pick. You know, I do I do ESPN LA now, yep, um, yep. and the host of ESPN LA is a guy named George Sedano. Yeah, and George is a, he does a ton of stuff. Apparently, a much bigger deal than I give him credit for. Um, but one of the things he does, he does uh, regional games for ESPN in mm-hmm. basketball. Does Lakers stuff, uh, and he is down doing the Miami. I don't know who they're playing. Some you know, Harvard or it's a HBS school, I believe. Um, but he was doing a, an interview that's going to run later in the year with um, Cristobal or the co- head coach of Miami. And he's the same thing. And he said it's a very, very popular pick um, to go a long way. And so he's got some insight into that program. So it would be interesting to see. They had a lot of injuries last year. So a lot of excuses for why things did not go as well as they should have. Um, yeah, and I'm with you. I like Baylor. As a, as a long shot, sometimes in Cincinnati, you could throw into this also. Teams that you they're showing you what they are. Cincinnati showed you last year what they are. Mm-hmm. Baylor showed you last year what they are. Mm-hmm. You just have to choose whether to believe it or not. 
Right. They've they've shown you the blueprint, and there's a, that statement that says anytime someone tells you who they are, you believe them. Yep. At this point, do you believe that what we saw last year out of Baylor is what that the identity of that program is now? I think Dave Aranda's a hell of a coach, and he's going to be a problem for the for the conference going forward. Well, and it might be a foolish pick, but the reality is, what do you know now? Now, not what are you going to know in a month? Mm-hmm. What do you know now? That's gonna gonna make Oklahoma or Oklahoma State or Iowa State, one of the, whoever Texas. I don't even want to say Texas. It's just ridiculous. Right. But who who? What have you seen that you know they're going to be significantly better than what a Baylor is? It's just kind of riding under the the radar and doing their own business as the conference champion. I mean, that's the deal. Oklahoma State has replaced most of their defense. Oklahoma mm-hmm. transfer portal. Everybody uh, marquee yeah. was gone. Maybe they have replugged and reloaded, but maybe they haven't. So those are the type of spots you get five to one or better. That's the only time to take a long shot. As far as winning the national championship, um, I, I, it's back to Alabama until further notice. I do think uh, Georgia dropped off a little bit too much and what they're going to have to replace. You can't send nine guys on one side of the ball of the NFL, and that is your entire team, and then expect to preseason predict them to beat Alabama unless you go to the University of Georgia. So, right. I don't, um, think, I don't think Stetson Bennett is is near as good as he played a year ago as well at, for the quarterback in Georgia. Yeah, and that's if you have the defense to keep you in the game against Alabama. The and reality is – Short fields and all that. Yeah, the reality is Alabama gets their pick of every athlete in the country. Guys who want – if they want they want to, uh, that kid, 99% of the time they're going to go to Alabama. So they would have to be horrible at assessing talent for them to drop way off. Everybody else has to get lucky on a couple of guys. So we out of time, Brandon? We are, in fact. Guys, have a great week. Go to FatJackSports.com and get signed up. Don't wait until the start of the NFL season next week when you're paying more money and you've missed free winners. Don't drink and drive. Don't boat and drive. Don't boat, drink, and boat. Don't scooter and drive. Don't scooter and drink. drink. Yeah. You can drive and scooter. You can't drink and scooter. And wager responsibly, all right? Don't start your year making decisions that you're going to regret in a month, all right? Wager responsibly. Uh, If you have a gambling problem or think you might, uh, call the number that we run on this show. So, so Brandon, had a lot going on this summer, and it's interesting the the things I miss when I come back to America. You know, we have the NFL coming up in London. I may or may not get to go to this TV show. Um, May or may not have me sticking around in Vegas as that thing gets underway and gets going. But I'll tell you one of the things I miss, London TV. Have you ever been to London before? Probably I have not. not. I've I've wanted to go. It's on my bucket list. There's a lot of European things I want to do, but it is it's is not something I've been uh, been able to do just yet. Well, summer TV is my favorite by far. And London has a show, you can look it up on YouTube, called Naked Attraction. You ever heard of Naked Attraction? Is it anything like Naked and Afraid? No, nothing. Okay. So much better. So much better. It, so basically, Naked Attraction, they have a guy standing, uh, or a girl, either one. They have one contestant. It's like a game show. Is one this contestant. the one where they have like a curtain and then they, they raise it slowly? They do. Oh, they raise it slowly. So you're, so I've heard, I'm aware of its existence. I've never they have that. six people behind colored uh, windows panel, that, right? are, that are buck naked. No clothes on, top to bottom. Do you see like a silhouette? You see a silhouette, but nothing else. Okay. And then to start the game, they raise, start at the bottom, raise up the curtain or to where you can see the person from basically the waist down. And mm. what's the best thing about this show is that there's a host who I, I mean, she reminds me of Krista Yama Kapoor, you know, from CNN. I mean, she's a very, seems like a respectable journalist right. that will, that will come on there. And she's so, so what do you think of the clitoris there? Oh, jeez. You like the clitoris? It's a well-groomed area right down there by the beaver. I mean, she goes through this whole thing. Um, what do you think of the lips? You like the lips? All of those types. And you're getting in detail. And then the guy the guy would be like, yeah, yeah, I do. I do like those lips. Those are good lips. I like that. Uh, that's. Uh, I like the little run- r- runway that she's got going there. I love that stuff. Wow. And, and the thing is that, like, English television is – it's all in. They don't they, care. Do they give a shit is off the charts. Right, right. They do not care. <laughs> and so then what happens is the guy, after looking at everybody's beaver, he has to eliminate one of them. And so you get eliminated. You lose. You get last place in the game by basically not having the type of beaver that he would be interested in. This is why there is an influx in that type of plastic surgery right now. It's the best show in the world. And so he'll go, yeah, you know, and they're not numbered. They're colored. So they're behind yellow and red and green. And he'll go, yeah, I think I'm going to eliminate green. And they go, oh, why'd you eliminate green? Well, green, 
she's a little too furry down there. I didn't feel like the Good her boy. thighs were rubbing together. I mean, just something's really stupid. Something off, yeah. So dumb. So then they raise it up to above the breasts. Now you're looking at the the whole, you know, the whole private area. So they go through the same thing. What do you think of the areolas? And uh, those are nice nipples. You like the And he goes, and he goes, well, how about eliminate the red because of her nipples? I don't love those. Uh, and now they're the, and then they go up to, and then they speak. And so, they, so everything up to this point is strictly visual. They haven't visual even is, like asked them any questions about personality, nothing. Just the beaver, just the boobs. That's oh, it. My Lord. Then they go up and they say, Ask her a question. Well, what's your favorite position? Something stupid. What's right. your favorite position? What do you like? To you? It's something dumb. Is, and is an egg meat. Is an egg meat. Thank you. And it'll be in that cute little accent. Oh, la, 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 la. You know, that whole thing. And right. they're all like, you know, a waitress from, you know, from Bern or something. From some little town outside London. Nobody can afford to live in London that's a waitress. Right. So, and at the end, so at the end, they're down to two people. The dude goes back. He takes all his clothes off. And he comes firing out there naked. So now you got the host is the only one with clothes on. Two naked girls, a naked dude. And they are now he's going to pick. Who am I going to go on this date with? And he picks. And she comes out. They give each other. What I always think is funny because they give like a side hug. Yeah, you don't you don't go private to private on your on your first meeting. When that's, you're that's na- apparently that's inappropriate yeah. in London or in yeah. England. But I, I thought crazy. after all this judging behavior, there might be a private to private huggers not it's a side hug and then they go on a date then they they follow up with them clothes date they follow i was, I was up. gonna ask if it was a naked date right no they go to take them to a proper date is what they typically oh, I can't wait to go on a proper date go on a proper date then they come back and bring them back they have an interview with them and they say um what you think of the date and they say well you know we went out and then uh, i tried to call him back and he ghosted me i can't believe it. we're not gonna be in love forever right I mean, it's like they, they, they're they surprised that this foundation of a relationship based totally on what her clitoris looked like was not going to lead to a 60-year marriage or something. So that's my favorite show. That's what I miss the most from London. Uh, there's a ton of those shows on now. Too Hot to Handle. They basically take a bunch of people. See, I've, I've, I've seen snippets of that online. Yeah, a bunch of nymph, nymphos that want to have sex all the time. Then they, they take money away from them when they touch each other. Yeah. It's a funny show. Yeah. So I miss all of that. Um that, none of that has anything to do with sports. It just has, uh, it was just in my brain, and it was something that I thought the podcast people might care about because you can go and YouTube, you're, thank me later. It has nothing to do, it's not sexual at all. There's nothing arousing about it. It's right. just incredibly entertaining TV and, and great accents coming from uh, across the pond. So go check it out, Naked and Afraid. I, I can watch smut television if it's done with with like English or Australian accents. It's the best. It's so good. So it's naked, naked attraction. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to dig in and, and watch some of this on YouTube. Definitely need to. And I'm gonna. There's another one called Google Box that they basically uh, play by play and color commentate normal TV shows like that. <laughs> so go to Google Box and they, they, they. We'll talk about that the next one. That, that may be one of the things we do on the podcast or give people some some TV shows to watch this fall when they're not watching sports that they may have never heard of because yeah, I have a whole list of them. So football's not on every night. Not every night, and you're going to be flying some when you might as well be watching something stupid. So, uh, free winners, Brent. Let's give away a couple of pieces. Who you got this week? Uh, Penn State going to Purdue. Purdue always a little bit tough early in the season, uh, especially at home. You know, they upset Ohio State there a couple of years ago. Uh, they, they always kind of have a, an early push uh, to begin the season, but uh, Penn State laying three and a half on the road, I, I feel, is, is a bit too easy. That, that team. Uh, always seems to do well in the season, early in the season as well, before they tail off as it gets closer to Thanksgiving. But Penn State on the road, laying three and a half, I, I really kind of like that one. All right, I'm going to go with TCU going to Colorado. TCU up to an 11-point favorite on the road. Should play better defense down there than they have in the last couple of years. Colorado's just really not very good. Free winners are, are plays early in the year that you're playing like this. You want to try to figure out what you know that is going to be bad. Um, Wyoming was a pretty easy one. Hawaii kind of knew they weren't going to play a lot of defense. Colorado's in that same mold. They're, not, they're kind of lost as a program, not recruiting typically well, and underperforming in the Pac-12. A little bit like we look at bowl games, conference versus conference, the Big Ten or the Big 12 should be able to outperform Colorado. Go ahead and lay the, the 11 points and play TCU minus the points. Uh, next one for me will be uh, Louisville going to Syracuse. You know, they, they haven't historically played well outside of the Lamar Jackson years in that dome but uh syracuse they're a mess they, i think they're going to be continue to be a mess for a while uh and that 
the conference doesn't get much easier for them. But Cardinal, uh, four-point favorites on the road on uh, on Saturday night. Yeah, Louisville's covered seven of the last eight in the series as well. So they've been good against Louisville. Really got some direction and some stability with their new coach. Also a coach that covers a lot of number. When they score 30 points or more, he is almost unbeatable. And that, that quarterback is, is, is going to be something to watch. He's not going to be you know, Lamar Jackson, but he's, he's in that same mold. And um, Lee Cunningham is, is a definite player. Now let's go ahead and lay the 40 and play uh, Alabama against Utah State. Uh, Utah State is 5-0 and against the spread their last five on the road. But Alabama, as I talked about earlier on the show, uh, before we got to the podcast, uh, Nick Saban on a 4-0 and run against teams where he's a 30-point favorite or more. They were 2-0 and last year in that spot, 2-0 and the year before. He's typically not great against non-Power 5 teams, uh, 7-13-1 and against the spread over his last 21, but really outperforms the market, uh, generally speaking, over the last couple of years. When you give he gives 30 points or more, let's go ahead and lay those points. Play Alabama. That is your fourth free winner. Those are uh, thank you guys for downloading the podcast of the show. They're not going out on the air to any of the markets around the country. You've got to get them right here on the podcast. And you're going to learn about Naked Attraction and much more. So thank you guys for joining us. Until next week, for Brandon the Fat Jack, this has been the podcast version of the Fat Jack Sports Hour.